All right, guys, how's it going again? Uh, Y'all seen me work on this scrapple truck before? I uh, had to put a swing motor in this thing before, so today what we're going to do is we're going to check the uh, check the gear on this. We're going to drain it, actually. And then once we drain it, we're going to take and uh, on this one side over here, we got to put a... There's a little gauge that goes in there, and it lets you know if it's full or not. That was a part of that upgrade thing that I just never did do. And also the, fuel, uh, the uh, hydraulic filters on this thing, we're going to get them changed as well and uh and uh because they're pretty nasty and i never did change them whenever we got this thing and i really wanted to get them changed because it just the pumps feel like they're winding whenever when i'm using this thing so we're going to take get that there i done got them off um and everything i cleaned all the housings and stuff up so when i put the new filters on we won't get no grease in there i do got some blocks in there though we'll keep that bed from you know, if the cylinder did bleed off, it wouldn't sit there and, you know, wouldn't smash me. And also, we got this gauge here on the side here. This thing's been leaking like a sieve ever since we've got it. And the glass is broke here. And I finally got one to put on there. And this is just one of them things that's been kind of just, I don't, just been trying to get it done and just trying to get it done. But it just seems like I can't ever get this. And even though it's raining outside here today and we're outside the shop, I still want to go ahead and get that done and check all that stuff there out. Um, but the weird thing is with this right here, there's like a nut on the back side. And I'm just kind of leery about, I don't know if that, I mean, I'm just trying to think of how they put it in there. Cause there's no vents on top. The only thing we got is just this right here. And there ain't no, nowhere you can access nothing on this tank at all. So, uh, I'm just kind of, kind of leery about how it's, you know, it's going to come off of there and things. So i'll show you the uh i'll show y'all the filter in here uh y'all can see here we got another got us another 69 uh, 69 crew cab in here there's the one that i got and then this here's the one my brother he just got that one there we got to do some work on that that'll be in a later video uh y'all did see the f-350 truck sitting here it's um it needs to get in the shop and uh like i said got another ditch witch in here as well and this ditch which here we got to put glow plugs and stuff in this and get this thing here running got some motor mounts to fix i believe and definitely gotta get a new set of tracks on this one y'all remember the one other day i put the tracks on and uh y'all seen how much tread that one had but you can see this in here it's it's pretty much wore down to hardly nothing it won't it, it does good for not tearing up the yard but as far as everything else it just don't get no traction in the snow i was going to work on this today but they called and said the grapple truck needed to get that thing really done before they use it it's Got a bunch of logs on some jobs they need to get picked up so that's what we're going to do on that already got the filter right there for that and like i said in other videos see i'm still waiting on parts on this thing here it told me to be january 31st time i got the water pump i can't get the water pump nowhere else gm can't get it which that is a gm motor but gm still can't get it so i did I did do some work on that and i didn't show no process of me working on this 90 f350 here uh, but I did go ahead and I got the fenders. I did get the fenders on the front of it. I got my wiring and everything hooked up. I know it's kind of dark in here. Uh, got steering linkages and I did get the dash put back together in there as well. So this truck here won't take too much longer and we'll be running this truck here. Uh, I've had this thing apart for I don't know how many years. If anybody wants to see me do some work on this truck here or any of the trucks I got around here or anything, just comment down below. You know hey i want to see see you do some work on this truck or that truck because i don't really know if there's a whole lot of people out there being interested the this body style here the the brick nose body style a lot of people they don't really like this but this is one of my favorite the brick nose is kind of like my favorite you know my favorite uh, body style the interior in this truck is really good at one time somebody put the aftermarket seats and stuff in there and uh, this is the five speed it's got a brand new zf5 in there and like i said the dash and the steering wheel i put all that stuff back in the other day we'll get this ugly ass tinted window stuff here off but uh other than that there let's uh let's show y'all here what it looks like down inside this filter housing here i took it apart and uh i got holes everywhere i haven't it but just, if y'all can see that uh filter housing here i mean you can just see how nasty is all the gunk in there and then down inside here it is just uh it's just plum nasty down inside here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean all this mess here out clean that filter because this filter housing here it's it's just a metal cartridge and all you do is you just clean it out and um once you clean out you just stuff it back in there and you put it on there but you want to put this one on there first and then put the other filter on there uh put this just screw on filter on there last so we're going to go ahead and uh clean all these parts here up this is the back piece that goes on there it's got a big o-ring on there we'll get that tightened up 
and uh, get all this cleaned up. Once it gets cleaned up, we'll get back out there and we'll go ahead and see about uh, getting the filter housings on there and trying to get that new um, trying to get that new uh, slight glass on there. Here, I'll show you what I'm talking about real quick before I get before I get off here. Here's the uh, there's the filter that they gave me. That's the wrong one. He told me that at uh, at the Petersons. He said that filter there, you might need it. You might not just make sure that one there is not all tore up and that one's good. So we'll take that one there back. But you would think inside that tank, they would have these these things on there to where you can, uh, to where you could just do, you know what I'm saying, do that there. But uh, for some reason, I'm kind of leery if I start to take this off and this is not bought, bit into that tank, I don't know if I'm going to take the top of it off and uh, put a... Um, put a magnet down inside there to kind of hold this so I can screw it in there. I don't really know. But the other weird thing about it is, is on this side here, there's a piece of rubber. So I don't know if they put these, I don't know if they put these in there whenever they, um, I don't know if they put these in there whenever, uh, like they're welding a tank together, but I wouldn't think so. You know, before they weld the top on or they screw this in there. I don't really know. Uh, most time the ones, you know, you take the sight glass off there, it's usually either I uh, got like a clear long tube and it's got two, you know, little uh, fittings on there, compression fittings on there. But this here's a, uh, this here's a little bit different here. So we'll, uh, uh, we'll quit talking about this here. And then, like I said, we'll get, uh, get this filter out there cleaned out and I'll show you what it looks like once I get it done. Alrighty guys. Well, I got this thing all cleaned out. As you can see here, it's way better than what it was before. Um, we're gonna go ahead now and we'll put it all back together. Spring here. It'll go down in the bottom just like that. The filter here, you see I got all the debris and stuff out of that filter there as well. So I'll go ahead and wipe it off here a little bit. Just like that there. Stick it down inside here. Where that just sits down inside that spring there. And then on this part here, when we're doing this, I'm gonna give me just a, just a tad little bit. I'm just give me a tad little bit of grease to go right around the end of this. Just so that o-ring when it goes back in there it uh it should seal itself right back up like i said just put a little grease on there to where it'll to where it will spin on there a little bit more pick this back up turn this back through here just like this and then you'll get that sitting in there just like that and then this little o-ring piece here will go back in there just like that. And it's kind of like spring loaded down inside there. So whenever you pick this thing here up, we'll make sure we hold it, hold it down here from the bottom. And then, like I said, we'll get back out here and turn my light here off. I just want y'all to see that there. Get my light off back here. And then the O-ring, the O-ring that's on this, I'm just going to take a little hydraulic fluid on the, on the O-ring itself. And, uh, Put it on there. Let me see. Make sure y'all can sit right here, just like this. Yeah, y'all should be able to see it there. And then, like I said, I'm gonna set this on the frame here. Hope that don't fall over there. Give me a little bit of hydraulic oil that's leaking. Like I said, I done cleaned all these up anyways. About a little hydraulic oil. A little hydraulic oil around that one there.
it'll start, like I said, it'll start going right on there. It'll start taking and going itself right on there, no problem. And like I said, when you're tightening it up, just make sure it goes, gets on there nice and straight. And you'll see, like I said, it says 20, it says about 20 foot pounds, so just kind of give yourself a little bit of an ideal. You know, just don't go crazy tight on it. It's like I said, 20 foot pounds, is, if that's what it calls for, just get it snugged up about that much because <clears throat> it is going into an aluminum housing just to let you know just like that there and that should have it sealed up pretty good I'll go in the shop here and grab it out of the filter This one right here is going to take a Napa. That one down there is a, is a Donaldson. I'll get the number off for y'all here in a second. But I'm putting a Napa gold. I'm putting a Napa filter on there just because they didn't have. They just didn't have that filter there in Donaldson when I went up there, and uh, all they had was just this one. So this one right here, it'll be just fine. It ain't going to hurt nothing. Because in true honesty, I think I'm just going to run this. Uh, I think I'm just gonna. I think I'm gonna run this for just a little bit, and I think I'm gonna change it out. Of, change this filter here out again. Um, I probably should have heated this O-ring here up a little bit and got it a little. Got a little bit to where it was gonna stay in there. Might have do a little finessing with this one to get it in there. Better put a little grease in there, maybe. I mean, it's it's staying in there now. Yeah, there we go. I should do it. And then, like I said, I'll just put a little grease all the way around it here. Just take the oil, the hydraulic oil that's in here. We'll put it around there just like that there. We shouldn't have no problem with that. But like I said, when you're doing this, make sure that you put, make sure, like I said, you do the, you do it just like this here. You take this filter off. the cartridge filter off first and then put the other filter on there afterwards so we got it just like that there Get all up around there so I can tighten it up this image is the oiliest thing I think I, this, it is grab my truck this image right here when we go somewhere you either gotta either put a piece of cardboard underneath of it or something I've tried to find every leak on here but you I can't find all the leaks on this thing the thing about it is it leaks everywhere but the, the crazy thing is, is there's, it's never, uh, it is, it's not never low on nothing besides this hydraulic tank here. There we go. That should be good there. I don't think I should need no more than that on there. Go ahead and slide that over there out of the way. Get on up there a little bit more. Should be doing it and we'll go ahead and like i said i'll write on them as well turn these valves on i hear it in there filling up so we'll make sure it ain't gonna leak nowhere really hear uh, bubbling in there now make sure we're not leaking nowhere everything seems to be doing good now on that I don't see no leaks on it nowhere but like I said that's a that's a five five seven four five seven uh, hydraulic filter is what's on there and then like I said the little metal one in there don't worry too much about that one there unless yours, yours is collapsed and ain't worth a shit 
then you can get a new one of those but on the donaldson one here let's find out find that number here i know i've seen it on here because yeah and if you want the donaldson number it's a p55038 is the donaldson number on that now we're going to try to tackle this uh we're going to try to tackle this filler gauge here now and see if we can't get that to work. I'm, I'm kind of leery because, like I said, I'm thinking that the nuts are going to fall down in the tank and then we're just going to be screwed. So I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out here in a second. Now it's kind of hard for you guys to see here. I'm just, I'm sure it's going to start pouring out here pretty good when I take this here out. Yeah, there it goes. I figured it was going to, but that's okay. It was expected. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape all this. I'm sure y'all guys can't see it. I just, I don't want the, uh, it's, it's raining. And I'm just trying to get my GoPro all in that rain. Like I said, the bottom one's gonna be kind of tricky. But I guess on the new ones here, the, the boats here, I don't guess we need those. I'm assuming. We'll take it right there off. Take this one here off. But y'all, I don't know if y'all remember, but whenever I did work on this one before, the uh, the hydraulic oil on this one here, it was absolutely, I mean, just disgusting. It was white and uh, had had all you know had we had all the water and stuff in there. So I went ahead and got that cleared up, you know, put that one stuff in there. It actually cleared it up really good. So now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to let that drain for just a second. While that's draining, I'm going to take and uh, I'll clean it all off and then we'll get the thing put on there. Got the deslate glass put on there. And uh, <clears throat> what I had to wind up doing is I left the bottom one good, but on the top here, I had to wind up grinding this, this little plastic piece here down to where it would make this smaller where it's making us a little bit smaller and then it was able to go inside there but if wouldn't didn't do that right there it wasn't going to go in there so i don't understand i mean i don't really understand why it would just go directly down in there but it wouldn't so that's just how that's just how that right there turned out to be <clears throat> make a damn mess one on it well, at least the bucket's down there so hopefully five gallons hopefully it's five gallons here will at least put us in a sight glass here might have to have more i don't know i know before when it wasn't in a sight glass about 10 about five gallons put it in there so we're gonna see here see about what this gets to i should just drain the whole fucking tank that's what i should have did because that damn hydraulic oil there is it's pretty nasty Yeah, I see it's coming up in the sight glass now. Hopefully it don't leak. As y'all can see there, it's coming on up there. main thing is as long as it does not leak and I don't see it leaking at the moment plus with the bed up and the boom and everything up I think I think five gallons is gonna do us pretty good that's gonna go ahead and get us on up there be pretty close about where we're gonna have to be at let it keep going on up there yeah I think we'll be just fine with that right there it's kind of about where it needs to be at and like I said these little o-rings here are holding pretty good and I don't think we're having no problems with that there like I said I'll go ahead and clean this damn mess here up that I made put this bucket here back in the shop here get every little last bit we get what I do is I got a 55 gallon barrel in there and that's usually where I pump it I used I didn't have hydraulic oil until I find I was like, well, I better get me some hydraulic oil, so. I think it's about 800 bucks. So 
somewhere around there. I think it's $800 for a 55 gallon drum of hydraulic oil. And I bought that, I bought that uh, sometime last year, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, sometime, la sometime last year I bought that. And it's just been sitting in the shop waiting for, kind of waiting on this job here, really. But we'll get that, all, we'll get that, I'll give me some more rags, we'll get that cleaned up. And uh, we'll go up here now and we'll start draining the gear oil out of this. I'm gonna drain that, uh, I'm gonna drain that down there, get that hydraulic oil there. And then we're gonna go ahead and start draining the gear oil out of uh, that gearbox there. All right guys, well I went ahead and took that small plug out on the bottom there and I'm letting that drain out right now. And uh, what I'm gonna also do now is I'm gonna go ahead and try to take this one here off just to make sure. Cause I mean, in all honesty, a lot, not that much gear oil came out of there. So I want to make sure, there it goes. Okay. So I'm going to change all this gear oil out of there. And uh, then we'll, like I said, we'll, re, we'll refill it back up and uh, and pump it on in there. But they, when we're, where we got the pump, uh, he told us, he said, just go on ahead and, uh, and that gear oil still looks really, really good. But, once we got it done there, he said just you know run it about 10 hours and then change it out. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, here's the little bottom piece that goes on the bottom. It had a little bit of, uh, it had just a tad bit, a little bit of metal stuff on there, but it wasn't nothing major. Uh, so I'll make sure I clean that up there. I got that all cleaned up really good. And uh, like I said, for right now, we're just gonna let that drain out and uh, I'm gonna let it drain down inside that bucket there. And we'll put some, like I said, we'll put some fresh gear oil down inside there. The way these used to be uh, before the new design here, I don't know if whenever I put that on there, if I said anything, to, I don't know if I said anything about it. Um, but the, the old design, what the old design did was, is it was feared, it was filled full of uh, uh, hydraulic oil. The hydraulic oil would get inside, the whole hydraulic oil that went inside this is the same hydraulic oil that would go back down inside into the tank. And that's what this one line here is. This line here was the return line for the hydraulic, for that hydraulics, you know, the, for the hydraulics itself. So what I did was, is whenever I took, and on the very, very bottom of the motor, I don't know if you can see it, but right down there on the very, on the very bottom of that motor is, a, is, a, is the drain, is the, the drain for the hydro, uh, is the drain for the hydraulic motor. So now, the uh, uh, so now the way it's set up now is is the hydraulic the only hydraulic oil is in that is in the pump itself because see what was happening is the same thing that happened on this one right here is that water water would get down inside this tank and then when water would get down inside the tank here it would take and make it to where uh, it would get water in here, and then the water would go all the way through that gear in there, and the water would just sit in there. And it would get it would get moisture in there. Once it got moisture in there, it would rust the bearings up in there, and the bearings would lock up. And that's exactly what happened to the last motor that we. Uh, that's what happened to the last motor that was in here. The case drain that come through there for that right there would come down, and that little plug that I took out right there, there was there was like I said there was hydraulic oil that would come through this. The whole system would be just like that. The whole motor and everything that I took off. I don't even really know where in the hell. I don't even really know where in the hell I did with that thing. I probably wind up scrapping that thing because it wasn't no good. I think I kept the hydraulic motor off of it, but other than that, there, the guy told me whenever we bought this, you can't get parts. And just like this case here, you can't just buy the bearings in there. I'm sure you could probably try to get them aftermarket, but the way that ours was so gummed up in there and there was nothing left, you couldn't do a fucking thing with it. So I tried to put hydraulic oil in there and I tried to put gear oil in there and I tried to do everything I could, but. It just uh, it just wasn't happening. So I'm gonna let that finish draining there, and once that gets all drained out, uh, we'll go ahead and get that thing refilled up, and uh, should be able to you know fire this thing up and see what it's gonna do and call this job done. I know it ain't a very long video or nothing, uh, you know, nothing too fascinating here, but I just you know just showing you just a little bit of what you know uh, some days how some days run for me.
All right, guys, on that one side over there, there is a vent tube that's sitting there. And I'm gonna see what it does now. Cause I said, I remember when I filled this thing up before, I didn't have that problem. There it goes, it's going in there better now. I got enough in this barrel. Hoping. Over there at uh, over at the Petersons, the dealer over there, he said all you gotta do is just fill that thing up. Is just fill that thing up until it starts to run out that thing there. But what I do is, is I fill it I fill it up enough. Um, I fill it up enough. I fill it up enough to go right here. And then I'll, I'll just keep pumping and keep pumping and keep pumping just so it gets enough up in here to where the gears are. Because there's this is there's a whole band of gears right in here, and I want to make sure that them gears there is getting lubed up enough. So that's why that's why I do do it the way that I do it there, just like that. And then I ain't got to worry about it. But like I said, there is a vent tube on this one side here. And I knew something was going, something was weird, I said, because, man, that's some bitch, it used it on, it didn't do it to me last time. Alrighty, guys, uh, we're going to finish this job up real quick here, a little day getting late in the day there, uh, but I did get the oil drained out of it, and got some new oil in there, got the new filter and stuff on there, we're going to top this thing off some antifreeze. And the only, um, like I said, the only other thing that they said is the heat's not working. So I got to do around, take and do some messing around here with the heat, and uh, see why the uh, see why the heat ain't working. Uh, I, I put a brand new thermos, I put a brand new heater core in this a while back ago, and the hoses are getting super super hot. But it's for some reason, I don't know if there's a valve in the door there or what's working, but something ain't working on that there so i might pull out in the shop here a minute and try to get that figured out